good morning students this is next chapter in chemistry that is chemical bonding and molecular structure here first we should know the definition for chemical bond chemical bond definition is the attraction forces exist between two atoms But that means between any two atoms some attraction forces present ah uh, then bond will be formed due to attraction forces between two atoms then that bond is called chemical bond this is three types chemical bond is classified into three types they are ionic bond covalent bond metallic bond we will discuss uh, about these things later next before that we will discuss one point that is valency valency different valency electrons different valency electrons means number of electrons present in outermost orbit is called valency electrons nothing but last electrons present in last shell but valency means combining capacity the combining capacity of an atom is called valency combining capacity of an atom is called what valency so valency is equal to number of hydrogen atoms or number of chlorine atoms or double the number of oxygen atoms number of hydrogen atoms number of chlorine atoms or number of double the number of oxygen atoms for example take ch4 in the ch4 carbon attached with four hydrogen atoms so that carbon combining capacity is how much four so that valency of carbon valency of carbon in ch4 is four next in case of co2 here carbon bonded with two oxygen atoms but when oxygen atoms are present we should take a double number that means four so valency of carbon in co2 is how much four in case of so2 also so2 also valency of sulfur is four because two oxygen atoms are present here in case of so3 valency is six because here three oxygen atoms are present if oxygen atoms are present then we should take its a double number in case of c2h6 this is somehow important here two carbon atoms are central atoms two carbon atoms attached with six hydrogen atoms two carbon atoms attached with six hydrogen atoms that means each carbon attached with three hydrogen atoms only that means valency is calculated per atom valency is calculated per atom only it should be calculated per atom so that the valency of carbon in c2h6 is how much 3 in pcl3 what is the valency of phosphorus 3 because three chlorine atoms are present in case of pcl5 here five chlorine atoms are present so that in in that case also valency is 5 so that is the way to calculate valency of the central atoms in a given molecules next next part next topic in this chapter is lewis dot structures here two cases are there lewis dot structures for atoms and lewis dot structures for molecules that can be calculated by that means lewis dot structures can be drawn by using valency electrons using valency electrons see this is lewis dot structure for a hydrogen because hydrogen contain only one valency electron so that h dot that means you should you can put this dot either here 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 anywhere you can put that dot that dot indicates what electron which electron valency electron lewis dot structure for uh, next sorry valency uh, lewis dot structure for oxygen what how many valency electrons present in oxygen six valency electrons so first 1 2 3 4 still two remain you 
can put those two two either here here or here here next this is the valency dot structure for sorry lewis dot structure for nitrogen it contains five valency electrons 1 2 3 4 5 or you can put 1 2 3 4 5 you can mention like that that also will be right in case of sulfur 6 valence electrons are there. this is the word lewis dot structure for atoms no molecules lewis dot structures for molecules in case of ch first we have to write central atom what is central atom carbon in this in that central atom how many valence electrons are present four one two three four next how many hydrogens are present four one two three four put uh, each hydrogen having one electron so put one electron for one one hydrogen then it will this will be the lewis dot structure for what CH4. Similarly, CO2. Here also central atom is what? Carbon. It contains four electrons. Here oxygen. How many oxygen atoms? Two oxygen. Each, each oxygen having six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here also one, two, three, four, five, six. Like that, you can draw Lewis dot structure for any molecule i discussed already this model this model to you in 10th class carbon and its compounds chapter next one ionic bond ionic bond what is the definition of ionic bond the electrostatic force of attractions between two oppositely charged ions is called ionic bond that means between oppositely charged ions nothing but between cation and anion some attraction forces exist there those attraction forces are called electrostatic force of attractions because of those attractions one more bond uh, one bond will be formed between cation and anion that bond here is called ionic bond that is called ionic bond for example take NaCl that means how NaCl will be formed in NaCl two atoms are present they are sodium and chlorine this sodium contain one valence electron this chlorine contains seven valence electrons seven here sodium is metal Chlorine is non-metal. Metal means what? It readily loses electrons. Non-metal means what? It readily gains electron. This sodium loses its valency electron to chlorine. Then sodium becomes Na+. And this Cl becomes Cl-. That means here positive ion and negative ions are present. Nothing but cation and anions are present. Between cation and anions, attraction forces exist. Which attraction forces? Electrostatic force of attractions. Finally, NaCl will be formed. In that NaCl, which bond is present? Ionic bond is present. Because between positive charge species and negative charge species, strong electrostatic force of attractions are present. Due to that, bond will be formed here. That bond is called what? Ionic bond. One more example, MgCl2. Mg having two valence electrons. Chlorine having seven valence electrons. This is metal atom. Magnesium is metal, like sodium. It also loses its two electrons to chlorine. That means one electron to one chlorine and one more electron to another chlorine. Then finally, magnesium loses two electrons so that it exhibits plus two oxygen state and Cl is minus one minus one. Between positive charge and negative charges, bond will be formed, attractions will exist. Those attractions are called what? Electrostatic force of attractions. Because of that, attractions MgCl2 will be formed. Like that, uh, ionic bond will be formed between two oppositely charged ions. So, this is the explanation for the above process. Next. Factors favorable for the formation of ionic bond. That means which factors are favorable for the ionic bond. So to form the ionic bond, 
first cation should be formed and anion should be formed that means to to form to form cation with what are the favorable conditions to form anions what are the favorable conditions that means we should discuss favorable conditions for the formation of cation as well as formation of anion first we will discuss about uh, favorable conditions for the cation later we will discuss about favorable conditions for anion this is cation favorable conditions first condition is what large atomic size what is that one large atomic size that means if a size of the atom increases then cation formation increases how if size of atom increases then nuclear attraction decreases that means attraction between nucleus and valence electron that means outermost electron decreases then we can remove that electron easily by applying less energy that means if size of the atom increases cation formation increases that is the meaning of that point so if the size of the atom increases the attraction between nucleus and valence electron decreases hence cation formation increases cation formation increases for example take lithium sodium potassium in those three cases we know that potassium having more size compared to sodium and lithium so that potassium can form cation easily compared to sodium and lithium next one more factor for formation of cation that is low ip means ionization potential that means if an atom has low ip then it readily forms cation i told you already regarding ip in classification of elements if atomic size increases ip value decreases here we discussed about uh, large atomic size automatically this factor will come if an atom has low ip then it readily loses electron uh, sorry then it can it can form cation for example take magnesium and calcium in those two cases which is having more size calcium having more size automatically calcium having less ip that means calcium can form cation easily compared to magnesium so cation uh, compared to magnesium so if an atom having low ip it can form cation easily that's all next third factor low charge on ion low charge on ion charge means what here positive charge and negative charge are positive charge because we are discussing factors favorable for the formation of cation that means we have to discuss low positive charge on ion see what what we know regarding positive charge if positive charge increases then nuclear attraction also increases then size of the atom will decrease so what is our point so the positive charge should not be more the positive charge should be less if the charge of the charge of the cation is less then if the uh, then it can form uh, cation very easily that means we can remove electron from that very easily then it can form ionic bond easily so what is the point as the charge on the ion decreases which ion cation decreases then formation of cation increase suppose take na plus mg plus 2 al plus 3 in these three cases al plus 3 having less size because positive charge is more if size is less we cannot remove electron easily but if here size is some more compared to these three cases so that we can remove electron from this thereby it can form cation easily then this can, this species forms ionic bond easily compared to these two cases that is about low charge on ion and last favorable factor that is cation with inert gas configuration cation with inert gas configuration inert gas configuration means the species having eight electrons in its outermost orbit that is called inert gas so the cation with the inert gas configuration is readily form ionic bond than cation with the pseudo inert gas configuration here one new point has come that is pseudo inert gas configuration pseudo inert gas means 
if a if a substance having ns2 np6 nd10 configuration ns2 np6 nd10 configuration that is called pseudo inert gas configuration for example take zn+2 here zn+2 configuration means see this is zn its electronic configuration is what 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d10 that means this is outer shell zn plus 2 means we have to remove two electrons from outermost orbit here outermost orbit is what 4s2 so its configuration becomes 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 3d10 4s0 see here ns2 np6 nd10 ns2 np6 nd10 this is what pseudo inert gas configuration that is called pseudo, pseudo inert gas configuration so what is our point cations having inert gas configuration readily forms in a ionic bond than cations with pseudo inert gas configuration see mg plus 2 that is inert gas configuration because it is it has neon configuration just now we discussed uh, this one this configuration zn plus 2 this is pseudo inert gas configuration so among these two which can form ionic bond easily this one because because inert gas configuration is a stable configuration so what is the point cation with inert gas configuration readily forms ionic bond than pseudo inert gas configuration so these are all the four factors which favorable for the formation of cation